Ned Lamont uh, keeps changing his mind and his tune on these tolls, and not that he wants to do them. He's always said he wants to do them, but he's changed. First, we're going to... Uh, uh, it, anybody that lives within, you know, a mile and a half of the highway, we're not going to toll them. And then, uh, Connecticut residents, now you're good. And then, uh, now we're going to toll every other car now. And we're going to toll 50% on Connecticut residents. What is this guy? What is his deal? I mean, he, I'll tell you something before you answer the question. I did a, uh, a scathing blog about him yesterday and not one person came to his defense. And that is very unusual. Usually somebody jumps all over me. People do not like him. Ned the head. Needle nose Ned Ryerson, talk about it. Uh, yeah, I would just say do the math. So I did a quick calculation when the proposal came out from Danbury to Waterbury, which is a lot of your listeners, uh, you know, area. Right. Um, it's a dollar fifty each way. Okay, and then that doesn't include non uh, a high peak uh, travel. So it's just your average. It's a dollar fifty at fifty percent, which is what he said he would do for Connecticut residents. So for the week, um, you know, you're fifteen dollars a week. And, you know, for the month, you're $90 or what's, what's real quick, you're $60 for the month and you're $720 for the year. So you, you, you're paying a $720 tax that you never had to pay before. And if you're coming, you know, a lot of people that, you know, work here in Danbury from the Waterbury, particularly Waterbury itself, are working in a lot of our service industries at the mall, things like that, maybe going to school at Westcon uh, or at Naugatuck Valley or whatever. So, you know, that's uh, just another burden that people are frankly, not, not suited to be able to pay that are going to get stuck with. And, you know, it's an $800 million tax on the middle class. And, you know, we have to call our legislators, let them know that that's not acceptable. It's not our fault you spent the money on other things. I don't care how we got here, but you're not going to balance the budget on the way out on our backs. I have a plan, and uh, I already know from previous conversations with you that you're not going to like one part of it. But just let me say what i got to say, okay, real quick. Yeah. Um, you, you you legalize the wacky weed and you legalize sports betting and you do it now. Problem double solved. Cash flowing out your pockets. Talk about it. <laughs> well, I think the um, here's the problem with the, with I think look I think legalization of marijuana is coming. It's just a matter of whether it comes this year, or next year, or even if they adopt it this year, it's gonna take a year to implement. But the problem now is we're surrounded by other other states that are doing it too. So your, your ability to generate as much revenue as you want there is diminished. So you figure about $40 million a year will come in from uh, the sales tax from weed, you know, trying to keep it competitive. Remember, if you tax it too much, you're going to keep the local dealer in business. So you got to be careful how you do that. And then the sports betting, um, that's coming to, uh, again, about 40 to $50 million. Uh, it's a drop in the bucket for the state. That's about $100 million you generate. But remember, every drop counts. Right? Yeah, so, and to your first um, point, you don't, you don't want to be last in line. On this, right? right? I mean, everybody's right. going to fall like dominoes, so get there as fast as possible, and why not both? Right. Well, yeah, sports betting is, is a no-brainer. The Supreme Court green-lighted it. I don't know why we don't do it now. And, you know, as far as the weed, you got to be a little more careful with how you roll that out, but, you're, you know, you're surrounded. So you might as well, at this point, um, you know, put it out there for sale and try to make a few bucks off of it and, and then take that money and put it into addiction and recovery and stuff like that. So, um yeah, I, I agree with you on that, but it doesn't cover that huge uh, gaping uh, gap that we have in the transportation fund. That's the big issue for, for that side of it, for the construction. And then the other stuff, look, if it's not nailed down, they're taxing it, you know. Um, and I don't, I'm not necessarily always been opposed to uh, extending the sales tax to items that currently are exempt because it's such a wacky way they do it. But I would rather have seen them lower the sales tax and just put a, a blanket tax and just about everything except for food for the needy, where you would give them, if you have a WIC card or a SNAP card, if you're on some kind of program, you would be exempt from paying sales tax on food and just be done with it. You know, I just came back from the South. Um, I was down in, in Tennessee and some other spots, and that's what they do. So the sales tax in their case in Tennessee, it's 9%, but there's no income tax. That's a pretty good trade off, I think. Yeah, Danbury um, so, Mayor Mark Bouton joining the show. Go ahead. No, so I mean, there, there's ways to do that. Um, a little bit more equitably, and you know, I would have definitely dropped the sales tax. So you can go back and say, "Yeah, but you're going to buy that color TV. You're only going to pay five percent, not six and whatever percent." So if I'm hearing you correctly, I'm right, and Lamont is wrong. Yeah, you're right. All right, well, that's what we're, yeah. huh. that's what we're talking. You about. wanted validation, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that exempt complete validation and um, vote Lou. That's all I can. And tell. that sales tax <laughs> exempt list that you were talking about, Ethan and I actually went over it. It is bizarre the division of what is exempt and what is not. And I don't think people would notice if a few items were changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's the problem though, because he didn't sort of go all in. 
now people are, are picking it apart and saying, oh, I got to go get a haircut and I get tax. And then I got to drop off my dry cleaning and I get tax because there's still stuff that he left that are exempt, right? So once you sort of make a blanket thing and then you lower the tax, you'll, you'll generate more revenue because people will come into the state to buy big ticket items here. And then secondly, um, it just is easy to understand for people. Oh, All right. okay. Well, I get it, you know. There you go. Okay, Ned, well, Ned I, Lamont I, sucks. Exactly. I, I got a question real yes. quick. I, yes. I'm confused. Are, are there going to be tolls or not? Yes. Are there, is it still in the process of being discussed? I think, uh, so here's, you know, they're still in the process. Session ends in June. The budget he put out will not look like anything that would they finally adapt. But it does put very large parameters over how much money they need and how do they get there. Um, so I, I think, yeah, tolls are coming. Um it's about a four to five year process from the time you vote for them to they actually get put up. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, this is, uh, you know, going to be a, just another job killer in Connecticut. And for, for Danbury in particular, it hurts us because 50% of the people that go to our mall come from Eastern New York and other people come here to shop at places like Stu Leonard's and Costco and stuff like that. It's going to, it's going to take a, I hate to use this pun, a toll on us in mm. terms of our economy. So we, you know, it's just no thought about it. I talked to a few people. You guys probably hear this too. People my age, um, classmates from high school, stuff like that. They're bolting, man. They're leaving. They're, you know, if you can afford to leave, they're heading out of here. Florida, Texas, Tennessee, any low tax state, that's where they're going. And um, it's kind of sad. I actually asked for a study just recently. I want to know every uh, state employee, how many of them are getting their checks sent to them out of out of state. In other mm-hmm. words, once they retired, how many moved out? I think you get a good example. I bet you it's close to 70 to 80 percent. Wow. Florida. But that's say. bad because that's our money. That's our tax money that's paying their retirement, which I don't quibble with. That's now being spent in Florida. Florida, you say? 